In this century, America has become a nation on wheels. We ride on wheels to work, to shop, to play, to go about any place we want to go. We depend on wheels to bring us the food we eat, the clothes we wear, the things we use. But when we depend on wheels, we depend also on highways and roads and streets for the wheels to roll on. And therein lies the challenge, building highways and roads and streets fast enough to keep up with the need. After World War II, the nation began developing a case of acute congestion that cost us millions of dollars a year in time, equipment, and lives. By 1956, there were more than 65 million cars on our roads, with 90 million forecast by 1975. Clearly, it was a time for national action. Congress responded with the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956, providing the staggering sum of $51 billion to be spent by the states on highway construction by 1971. The most talked about phase of the act is the interstate highway system, a 41,000 mile network of our most important roads. Most of these roads will be four, six, even eight lane expressways constructed for through traffic. They will take the over the road driver from city to city, coast to coast at highway speeds, even through large population centers. The Federal Aid Highway Act offers relief to the local driver too by giving him easy access to his home, work, stores, without interference from through traffic. Billions of dollars will be spent for city streets and expressways and for other highways of the primary system. The farmer too benefits directly from the billions allotted for the improvement of state and county highways as well as the farm to market roads of our rural system. These new highways will have a far-reaching economic impact on the entire nation. They provide a heavy-duty link between all parts of productive America. They are a shot in the arm for cities that have begun to feel the impact of growing downtown traffic congestion. They open up vast new areas for suburban living, and they encourage industry to disperse out of city congestion. They stimulate business and create new jobs, particularly among the nation's road builders, who are fulfilling their tremendous responsibility with specialized equipment and modern techniques to build roads of the highest quality at the lowest cost. They stimulate business too in the industry supplying the road builders, manufacturers of heavy equipment, explosives, aggregate, steel, concrete, petroleum products, chemicals, and many others. They create other jobs and business opportunities in related fields too, car, truck, and bus manufacturing, as well as services catering to the motor traveler. Perhaps most important of all, they will save lives, bringing about at least a 50% reduction in the death rate on major highways. State highway officials charged with the responsibility of designing and building the new highway system are actually planning into every mile all the factors that mean safety. Controlled access, for example, the most important factor that promotes safety by eliminating crossroads, private entrances, traffic signals, and grade crossings. Properly planned median strips to separate traffic. Wider traffic lanes that take into account highway driving speeds. Added lanes to handle increased traffic volume. Wider, firmer, well-stabilized shoulders to provide adequate extra roadside lanes for emergencies smooth, easy curves and gentle grades to ensure adequate sight distances, and bridges and overpasses over railroad tracks and intersecting highways. Of course, all highway planners recognize the safety value of such factors as adequate lighting at critical points, easy to read highway signs, modern electronic equipment such as the type that turns on reduced speed signs in bad weather, or even removes ice from key spots automatically. Important, too, are such good maintenance practices as inexpensive full-scale ice removal with calcium chloride, drainage maintenance, and weed eradication. But the road to better roads is not easy. There are many problems, notably antiquated state laws left over from horse and buggy days, laws that must be brought up to date rising land prices, greatly increasing the cost of future highways unless the land can be purchased and set aside now. 
and the shortage of trained highway engineers. However, the solution to all the problems lies most of all in public understanding. For only when each citizen becomes better informed about his state's highway program, only when he helps develop the popular support so essential to highway progress, can the nation meet the highway challenge so the better, safer roads of tomorrow will become the roads of today.